Nick Robinson plays Eric in the miniseries Teacher. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. And I wanted to ask you, Nick, what was the most important thing to get right about playing Eric in this show? Um, well, there was a lot, I think, to uh, take into account when you're telling a story like this. But um, we definitely wanted to... Uh, at least what I wanted to do at, at the beginning was try and do a uh, bait and switch on the audience in terms of making them root for this relationship. And then later on, as they see the fallout of the relationship, um, hopefully realize that there were some lines crossed and boundaries crossed and uh, that, uh, you know, maybe make them examine why they rooted for the relationship to begin with. Um, so trying to get a mix of Eric's uh, innocence and sort of um, youth, but also um, not enough to cause any major red flags at the start, I guess. Um, that was definitely one thing we tried to navigate and negotiate while we were making this series yeah and like as uh the person playing eric like what was that like because sort of halfway through this series it does take a sharp left turn and what was it like sort of playing both sides of that turn as an actor um it was uh it, an exciting challenge uh i mean i think in you know preparing for this role what uh i realized and i think what hannah um already knew uh or the writer showrunner of the show already knew is that um uh these relationships happen a lot more than you would expect um there's a lot um and a lot of them don't even really become public there are different um sort of i you know things are, are swept under the rug um and even in conversations with friends and stuff i've heard people be like, oh, that happened in my high school, that happened in my high school. And um, in most of the stories that you hear about, it's really kind of a clickbait article um, after it happens and you don't get a whole lot of um, follow-up. And so part of what was uh, exciting about this show was that um, you really got to see the full fallout of this relationship and the way that it um, really ruined both of these characters' lives um, and uh, in different, in completely different ways, but um, it, it had a major lasting impact on, on both of their lives going forward. It completely altered the, the course of their, um, uh, yeah, of their, of their careers and of their relationships. Um, so uh, I, I, it was a, it was an exciting challenge and um, it, uh, you know, you, you really got to see um, the full scope of, of this relationship and the effect that it had on both of these characters' lives. Yeah, you often like, uh, it's a very different sort of story of abuse than what we're used to seeing on on television or film in terms of the way it's told, but also in terms of the nature of the relationship where it's sort of um, uh, a female is in the position of power in this and it's, it's a male. What did you learn about sort of male uh, victimhood or just um, more generally sort of abuse and grooming that you weren't aware of before? delving into this character um, yeah I, I learned a lot um there was you know this relationship uh it's it's you know at first glance it's kind of a gray area people you know have a lot of conflicting opinions in terms of um uh you know like right and wrong and um one thing that Hannah was really great about when we started was she just kind of gave me access to all of her research and all of her resources that she had um, made when she was in the writer's room actually writing it. And uh, uh, I got to speak with a, a psychologist who works a lot with uh, victims, male victims of childhood um, sexual trauma. And um, he was had a lot to say and, you know, uh, oftentimes um, 
you know, survivors don't uh, see themselves uh, or the relationship as um, as abusive until much later on after they become adults and kind of gain some hindsight and also find, you know, more normal relationships. Because when you're younger, you don't have much to base it on. And so you think that that is just what a relationship is. Um, and so, the, you know, as they grew apart from the relationship, they were able to contextualize it a bit more. Um, and I think that in Eric's case, it's a, it's a similar story. He's, um, uh, has really only had one relationship, high school relationship before this. So he's really emotionally unprepared to deal with, um, a, an affair and a, uh, you know, Claire is married. She has a husband. She's much older. She's dubbed twice his age. And he's just completely unprepared for everything that comes uh, with that. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, these relationships are oftentimes fetishized a little bit um, and uh, a lot, actually. And uh, so that's really all he was basing it on and not really thinking about the actual consequences. Um, um, so does that answer? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's, there's a lot you could look at, but, um, yeah, the definitely speaking to the, um, psychologist was, uh, was super helpful. Yeah. And I think, um, the interesting thing is that often, as, as you sort of saying, because it's like sort of seems normal at the time, it's not till there's perspective and sort of hindsight that sometimes people can see the situation they were in and that what was sort of damaging or unhealthy about it. Um, and this show helps reveal that through jumping in time. And so we're not just stuck in one moment of the relationship, but we get to see uh, many years after uh, what was it like jumping into uh, Eric at different moments in time in his life? Is that like a tricky thing to do? Like, Oh, now we're a couple of years later. It was a bit tricky. Yeah, I think the trickiest part um, was trying to show the passage of time, uh, like, the, you know, trying to show the years on these characters, because obviously we shot this all in the span of a few months, and the schedule was really tight. So we were trying to figure out, like, what is the fastest way to age Eric 10 years? Uh, and so we landed on a wig and that was difficult because we couldn't find the right hair color forever. And it was like this whole saga of trying to find the right hair. Um, and so that was all, you know, and on top of that, we were shooting some of these scenes that were, you know, 10 years in the future uh, on the same day as shooting something that was um, present day. So it was, you know, negotiating back and forth, trying to figure out, okay, Eric is in this headspace here and this headspace here. Um, it was definitely a fun challenge, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, that was part of the reason that the series, I feel like uh, was, um, had a lot to say is that it had a scope. And so you really got to see these characters in the before, the during and the after. Um, and, in a in-depth way. Um, so, um, yeah, I, the, the hardest part was just trying to get the hair right, I think. <laughs> what, what, what scene was sort of um, the most uh, interesting one for you to film? Um, well, there were a few, I mean, the, uh, uh, the scene, um, when, uh, the, the last scene of the, of the series was definitely a stressful one. Um, it was, uh, just as much as getting the, our, our, our we had very tight, a uh, very tight shoot schedule. So trying to squeeze everything in kind of at the last minute, um, was stressful and it's such a pivotal scene it's eric's really confronting uh his abuser and it there, there's a lot 
at stake there. Um, so that was a uh, definitely one that sticks out. Um, and uh, the whole uh, sequence in episode five of um, Claire and Eric going to the Airbnb together for his birthday was um, a fun sequence. We did a lot of that. Um, it was a lot of improv, a lot of handheld camera stuff. So it was, it was very freeing. We kind of just got to roam about the grounds of this cabin. Um, and um, yeah, that was also a, a good time. And it was, it was beautiful out there. We shot it up in uh, Calgary, actually, Canada. But uh, it doubled pretty well for Texas. Yeah. What was the, like, like shooting a story that at times gets very heavy, um, do you need to stay in that place or is there some levity in shooting and some sort of fun in shooting it? Um, it, uh, it, you, it depends. I think, um, you try and just, you know, leave work at the door when you get there. But, um, uh, Kate's also great in terms of keeping things light and, uh, fun. We also, you know, I mean, for anybody who has never shot an intimate scene before, it's really not very intimate and it's a strange experience. So you kind of have to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, did you have a favorite moment shooting? Um, there were, yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, doing that Airbnb sequence was, was a lot of fun. We also shot a couple days in Austin, Texas, which was, um, uh, was fun. Hannah is, uh, had, had lived there and had friends there and it was sort of a whirlwind couple of days, but, um, it was, it was, it was great. Had some, had some really good barbecue, went to Barton Springs, you know, it was a fun time. Oh, that's good. What did, like, um, what did you sort of, as an actor, let's, let's talk about the issues of the film, but what as an actor did you learn from this experience, like as someone giving performances and things? Um, I mean, I think that I, I definitely gained a, a much uh, better understanding of kind of the power dynamics of grooming and um, how, uh, you know, kind of insidious it can be at times where it's, it's very, it can be hard to pick out. Um, and just learning a lot more about uh, survivors of um, sexual assault and, and uh, like sort of the, the healing process uh, and just hearing firsthand really from um, different um, experts uh, was, was definitely, uh, you know, I learned, I learned a lot there. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I also just coming out of it with some, um, with some great relationships and, you know, getting to know Hannah and, and Kate and our cinematographer Q really well was all, uh, definitely, um, uh, you know, th that's what I, take out of it mm. uh is there anything like as an actor nick that sort of like a through line for you that you sort of bring into every role that you portray like that you know sort of some like i don't know method or some sort of like this philosophy that you take in with you to acting um you know i i wish there was i wish that i wish i had uh a a, a through line or a, a, um, some, you know, a mantra, but, uh, no, I, I'm just making it up as I go along, you know, uh, and trying to tell good stories and work with good people. And, um, um, that's, that's about it. Yeah. Maybe like, um, sort of artistic storytelling is not best, uh, done when sticking to rules. Yeah. Maybe that, that's good. Yeah. The only yeah. rule is the, the rules, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, that's. Um, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> um, well, uh, is there anything you learnt from Kate? 
Uh, well, with Kate, um, she had like I think she, she had a newborn baby the whole time we were filming. She um, and so I just developed just like a, a. I was in awe most of the time of her uh, work ethic. Um, she would be working all day and doing these scenes and also taking care of a newborn. And um, so I learned that um, I was not actually tired when I thought I was tired, that I don't think I, I knew what tired actually meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, 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 um, we'll, we'll finish Nick with uh, talking about what is a teacher about like what do you hope people like who have finished watching the, the series uh leave um with in their heads um i think it's a show that uh explores um the the really tricky nature of consent and um uh how difficult it can be uh, to, yeah, it's, it, the, the really tricky nature of consent and um, uh, the fallout um, a relationship like this can have on, um, on the people involved uh, and how long lasting the, um, the effects can be. And it, it takes years to kind of come to terms sometimes with um, uh, you know, being in, in an emotionally manipulative or abusive relationship. Um, so I just, I think that uh, hopefully people can, can see the series sort of as a whole um, and um, have a greater understanding and appreciation um, for sort of both of these characters, what they went through and the mistakes that they made. Yeah. Um, well, Nick, thanks so much for talking to us today. Yeah. People, people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com where they can make their own awards predictions, uh, join the forums for some feisty discussion, or watch some other contender interviews. And Nick, all the best luck with the Emmy Awards that are coming up later this year. Thank you, Matt. I very, uh, very much appreciate that. And um, thanks for your time. No, thanks for yours too. Bye.